time to go on an ancient adventure, a trip that takes us back to the beginning of everything in a city with a history written in stone. And yet your own journey through it is full of surprising unknowns. An ancient adventure with an extraordinary modern twist. This is Xi'an, China. I'm Samantha Brown, and I've traveled all over this world. And I'm always looking to find the destinations, the experiences, and most importantly, the people who make us feel like we're really a part of a place. That's why I have a love of travel and why these are my places to love. Wow. So I was in Xi'an exactly 10 years ago, and this city just astonished me with its history. And we're not talking history that's uh, centuries old, we're talking millenniums of history to absorb and take in. And uh, of course, a lot can change in 10 years, especially a city in China. So to get my, my ancient and modern bearing straight, I thought, why not head to the city wall? Wow, it is good to be back. Great perspective too. 12 meters or 40 feet tall, the wall as we enjoy it was started in the 14th century during the Ming Dynasty and creates a complete rectangle around old Xi'an. And walls have been a part of this city since 190 BC. This is the most complete city wall of its kind to have survived in China. And when it was built, it was considered one of the most impressive military defense systems in the world. Now it's the perfect place for a bike ride and an ice cream. <laughs> it's hard to believe that a wall that was started in the 1300s is a relative newcomer compared to what was discovered in a field just an hour away from here, hidden from view and history for over two millennia, the Terracotta Warriors. This is just an archeological phenomenon. And what you're looking at is is physical proof of a time that represents the birth of China, which was 200 years before Christ. And everyone here, they get up to 12,000 visitors a day, is here just trying to wrap your brain around that little nugget of information. And what your first reaction is, is, oh my goodness, the amount of effort that it took to create all these soldiers and horses and everything else they created back then. But then your second thought is, all the effort that goes into bringing them back to life. I'm the the archaeologists think there are 6,000 figures in here. Uh, how many have you restored and recovered so far? 1,300 fingers. So you have a job for life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole life. <laughs> Your whole life you were going to be here, yes. working in the pit. <laughs> yes, working in the pit. When this was discovered in 1974, mm. there had been no record of this written anywhere. Yeah. No one knew no. that it was created or even it was even buried, right? So there was no record of it coming into life and there was no record of it disappearing. So you, as the, the part of the restoration, you're giving them back their lives. Yes. <coughs> For if you finish or you preserve one sculpture, you are so proud because like a doctor, I make the life science sculpture alive. So you've worked down in these pits? Yes. And you've uncovered these warriors yourself. What does it feel like when you see someone's face looking back at you? When I walk in the pits, I would like to talk with uh, uh, sculptures. I want to say hello to them, all some best wishes. Best wishes. I just want to uh, say a story. When you look out at them and their facial expressions and the intensity, and no two facial expressions are alike, they do look like at any moment they are going to come to life. That really speaks to the craftsmanship that was around 
many, 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 many years ago, right? I mean, and yes. you get to, you actually get to touch that craftsmanship. Mm. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. So I, I have never been this close to a terracotta warrior. Yeah. There is energy coming off of him. Yes. And, and just looking at his detailing here, he even has nostrils. It's incredible. Even his shoes have yes. little ties. Yes. He's tied his shoes for battle. Mm. <laughs> He's ready. Yes. Original, it's uh, colorful, totally colorful. Some pieces, the color remains, but uh, sometimes the color is uh, pure off or down in the soil. I'm looking at this now and I just see puzzle pieces. How, how many pieces do you think he is? 120. Pieces. He's 120 pieces. pieces. How long would something like this have, have taken to put together again? From excavation site to when uh, you're when you're when putting finish. the pieces. Yeah. How long do you spend with your friend? Probably eight months. Eight, eight months for finish this. Yes. Just one soldier. One soldier. Yes. And so he right now he's getting ready to travel. Yeah, we are go to uh, America to for exhibition. I find it fascinating that these soldiers were created to protect uh, the emperor in the afterlife, and now their role is more to be ambassadors, right? Going out into the world from China to connect people from around the world to this remarkable past that you're uncovering as we speak. Yes. Not quite as old as the terracotta warriors, but almost as ancient and impressive is Chinese traditional medicine. It's the use of everything from herbs and roots to beetles and seahorses to help cure life's ailments. And though the prescription may not be familiar, how to get one is a visit to the doctor. Okay. So a long flight from New York City. Sat in one place for 15 hours. Mm. I just feel achy, achy. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm. Just mm. Very uh, low chi. You want to uh, become normal? I'd like to become normal, yes. Oh, ah, the pulse. The pulse. Mm -hmm. pulse. Okay. Have your tongue. Your tongue looks white. Too white. Too white. Okay. What's up? Age. <laughs> My age is 47. 37. Is your excrement normal? <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> you look, look like a banana. <laughs> it's getting a little more personal than I thought. Yes, it looks like a banana. And your pee. My pee. Oh, everything, everything's coming out. <laughs> I'm sorry. There are still times when I am very aware I am on camera. The doctor is uh, prescribed a medicine to you. So that prescription will cure yes. my jet lag. This is a prescription. Okay. And it'll make me feel not so tired. Small problem. Mm -hmm. It's sort of mystifying to know that my prescription, which starts like this, is going to be all boiled down and then delivered to me in an individual wax egg that you break open to reveal a little herb-packed gelatin nugget. That's my medicine? You can eat. You can eat it. Like right now? Yes. It's not bitter. It's uh, sweet. All right. I'm going to take a bite. Take it. It's very bitter. It's very bitter. Holy mackerel. I feel better already. If you happen to be in Xi'an between April and October, you can travel from the 21st century to the 2nd century BC, to the 9th century AD, and then back to the 21st century within six miles of each other. 
Xi'an is a city of immense historical significance. It's got a wall and a pagoda and a great mosque to prove it. So you would just assume that the city is, is a very serious city, really heavy in its historical importance. But at night, it totally transforms. It becomes this huge spectacle. It's like bright lights, ancient city. There is no doubt Xi'an knows how to put on a show. called Song of Everlasting Sorrow, and it's a spectacular adaptation of a 1,200-year-old poem. It tells the story of a noble emperor who falls deeply in love with a beautiful concubine and a military coup that threatens to shatter the empire. It features a huge cast of actors and dancers, magnificent costumes, lasers, fountains, projections, and they do this twice a night. The amphitheater is at the foot of the actual mountain where the story took place. But the light show continues all over the city of Xi'an, where all of the city's greatest ancient monuments get a nighttime treatment and then some. I mentioned earlier that Xi'an has a great mosque, and that's actually its name. The great mosque is located in what's called the Muslim Quarter. It's one of the most popular neighborhoods in the city for both tourists and locals, and it's just steps away from the beauty and tranquility of the Great Mosque and its gardens. Huh. Becomes another world in here, doesn't it? It is. Oh, so peaceful. So quiet. I'm Peter Chao, history major from Northwest University, Xi'an. I love to show the people from all over the world Xi'an because she has hometown of China history. When did the Muslims first come here? First, the Muslim people came to China along the Silk Roads from the first century. The largest immigration happened in the 14th century. 14th century. And where were they coming from? What were some of the from countries? From Pakistan, they cook from the Afghanistan, from Turkey, from Iran, from Syria, from whole Middle East. And uh, today, in the whole city, we have more than 50,000 Muslim people are living in just two blocks, mm -hmm. just right around this corner. It's interesting to me that even though this is a mosque, and the people who built this mosque were directly from the Middle East and Muslim countries, they still used Chinese architecture. Correct. When Muslim people come to China, they are minority. Mm -hmm. Chinese emperor are not allowed to build the traditional dome in China. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So they can build a mosque mm -hmm. in Chinese style, not in their own building. Got it. Whatever the emperor wants, exactly. the emperor gets. Just outside the mosque is the quarter's famous Muslim street. And it feels like we've traveled 600 years in the future in the span of 200 feet. Everyone who comes to Xi'an wants to do. They want to come to the Muslim quarter. A hundred, and they want to, 100%. percent. A hundred percent of the visitors to Xi'an come here. Come to so the you Muslim streets. Yeah, it's the food streets. Hundreds, hundreds of restaurants, food store, vendors. They sell the food, the local flavor every night. Especially if you want to try the Muslim cooking, this is the only opportunity, only place you can try. So what are some of the local delicacies here that I can only get in Xi'an? Burger? A burger? So this is one of the most famous uh, burger store in Xi'an. Should we get in line? Okay. And I know from traveling all around the world that you always go to the places with the longest line. Hey, is this the end of the line? Alright. You know, Muslim people, they don't eat pork, they only eat the lamb and the beef. And it comes in like a little bun. Yeah, exactly. They're all Chinese tourists. So these from are all, right. Chinese, from all over the China. So there are no locals here on this street? Very few. Okay. Uh, thank you. Nice, alright. This is my first Chinese burger. What are the spices? A uh, little spicy. Oh, that's nice. It's very nice. Oh, it's wonderful. It's so delicious. Mm -hmm. So is this is this um, 
Xi'an Chinese or is this Xi'an Muslim Chinese? It's a Xi'an Chinese Muslim. <laughs> the next day, Peter wants me to see a more personal side to the people of Xi'an, and so we leave it and travel about an hour and a half outside of the city to Yuan Jia, an old farm village turned retreat for weary urbanites. Yuan Jia? Yeah, Yuan is, Y-U-A-N is a, one Chinese family name. Okay. Jia means family. So that means the people from this village, they are relatives from the same family. Is that still happens today, or is this just in the past? They were all relatives, they were all, okay. People are here to eat home-cooked food, stock up on the local hot peppers, and fresh ground spices. Ginger is a healthy cooking materials. Woo! That's strong. We only, we, we only eat ginger in the morning. Morning ginger is in the same value as the ginseng. Do you know ginseng? It wakes you up. Exactly. It gets you going. You Where don't want to have It has more energy. Right. Ah. After sunset, temperature is cutting down, your body is getting cooler. At this moment, don't touch ginger. Don't touch ginger. Yeah, okay. at night. All right. People also come here to be entertained. They're about to do something. They're doing the show. It's a show time, I think. The two men who are flanking the storyteller. Who are they? What are they doing? They are the tea cooker. They're the tea cooker? Yeah, they are cooking the tea. What sure. do you mean they're cooking the tea? The tea. We have two different tea you can cook in China. One is a green tea. Green tea, you don't need to cook. Just put the tea yeah. in the water. Boil, steep, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. But also the, this tea, black tea, will be cooked in the hot water again, again, and again. Ah. For a couple of hours okay. until the tea taste totally go into the water. That's why every half an hour, they're going back to push, to burn the coal in the stove. Okay. To burn the tea water bowl again, again, and again. Okay, so, oh, and that's why they're the tea cookers. Exactly. Got it, okay. I've just, I've never seen anything like this oh, before. Oh, really? And this question's gonna come out wrong, but what is that man smoking? <laughs> so I know why I'm here, because I'm from somewhere very, very different. So places like this is just absorbing as much a different cultural life as I possibly can, a day in the life. But, why is everyone else here? Is there just an idea that you want to be a part of a life that is harder and harder to find in China? Is that why everyone's enjoying it? And also, most of the tourists today we can see around here, they're all people from Xi'an, from the city. They, these are all people from Xi'an, just kind of leaving the city. How we always just, just leaving the city. We just all need to leave the city. Exactly. Our Chinese family, every family is big. More generations live together. So that's why you can see the family people, family by family, all come here to enjoy the holiday vacation together just right here. So being here in this village is about being together with your family and yeah. just enjoying a more relaxed time. Relaxed time, right. I like it. And what's more relaxing than getting a massage and your ears cleaned? It's, you know, it's just, uh, it's a little ticklish. Uh, Mr. Ho is very delicate, I must say, and um, Ho, and now he's kind of digging out some stuff. <laughs> when I first saw this, I was really fascinated because this is something that, to me, is done in, in um, your own, you know, bathroom, in the privacy of your own home, sure. and yet you're doing it out in the open. So this is not just like cleaning your ears, this is a part of your entire body being healthy. We do this like every month. Once a month? Once a month. It's just a light. <laughs> oh, wow. 
That was wonderful. Okay, what, one more set. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, I, I paid for two ears, right? Oh, okay. Okay. okay, I hope so. Like a group of kite flyers to me. Yes, they are. Yeah, they all have the same hobbies or together around designated spot every uh -huh. week to share their experience making kites and flying kites. It's more like a fun game. Some of the members of the Dalmingon Kite Organization design kites, others build them, but they all get together to fly them. I didn't know kite flying was a team sport. This is this is all new to me. And this is a perfect spot to fly a kite big open space like this, right? Absolutely. In a big space in a city like this, it's very rare, you know, it's <laughs> rare. It's like a pearl hiding in the middle of the city. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that, that's, that's a kite? It is a kite. Does he make these kites? This is also you made? Yes. It's a newer one. He made it last year, actually. It's a very beautiful one. <laughs> Let's pick it up, right? Look at this. So that's this a kite? Such a gorgeous. You, you made that? Oh, this is incredible. Look, what the secret is in the back. When wind goes in here, it's... Look at that. Look oh. at that. Oh my gosh. Look, here in the middle, yeah. he even built up an oven. Yes, where the it's shoveled was, into, right? It's shoveled oh. into. Wow. Oh, and it opens up. Oh my goodness, yeah. this is a work of art. Does he sell his kites? Nope. All of his kites are not for sale. He said it's his piece of memory. Mm -hmm. He'd rather share his work, his art, with the other kite lovers instead of selling it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. A year of making trains from a, a shape or a pattern of a dragon. Mm -hmm. All the train cars. Right. Well, now I understand what he said when he said this is a team sport. This is a team effort. Oh, uh, really? Holy mackerel. I, how long do you think this kite is? 31 meters, exactly. Wow. That's yeah, three times wow. over 100 feet. Uh, Yes, me? <laughs> okay, sure. Hold it, hold, hold it tight. Hold it tight. Go, go. Go, let's go. <laughs> go. Uh you don't understand China unless you have been to Xi'an. When a destination leads us on an ancient adventure, when we come face to face with storytellers who are real and carved in stone, when we can stand in awe of the past and then be invited in to enjoy the everyday... Mr. Li! Xie Xie! Xie Xie! That is when we share a love of travel, and that's why Xi'an, China, is a place to love.